F big G, or force due to gravity due to Newton's universal law of gravitation, is the force of attraction between two objects, object two and object one, or, I mean, depending on how you label the objects, object one acting on object two, because it's a mutual force of attraction, is equal to G times mass one times mass two all over R squared. <clears throat> and a good example of this might be somebody standing on the surface of Earth. Now this is obviously not to scale because this looks a little bit like little prints. There's a person standing on the sur surface of the Earth. And then we have an R value between the center of the Earth and the person. And we might call that the radius of the Earth. Okay? And we may, we may make the assumption that the Earth is in fact a sphere, although we may know differently. So I'm going to give you the average radius of the Earth. Despite the fact that we know that the Earth's shape is an oblate spheroid, the average radius of the Earth happens to be 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters to two significant digits. I think it's like 6.39 or something like that. But we're going to go with, with 6.4. Um, the mass of the Earth is approximately 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. <coughs> And we're going to do this for a mass, a person with a mass of 100 kilograms. Now, there's somebody in my other class that said, hey, Mr. Killens, um, the radius of the Earth might be 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters, but from the center of the Earth to the center of the human, you have to keep in mind the fact that there's a distance between their toes and their belly button, if the belly button was the center of mass. Um, the thing is, the distance between my toes, as with your toes, and my belly button, isn't that negligible compared to the radius of the Earth? It, it, would, oh, yeah. it would disappear in the significant digits. I think we can agree, right? So we're going to disregard that in this case. We're going to make the educated guess that that's going to be disregarded. Okay? Although it is valid, if we were being very, very precise here, within the significant digits, it's going to disappear. Okay? So it's a valid comment, but not necessarily useful this time. <clears throat> so what I would like you to do is find out what the force of attraction is between the person and the Earth. And again, I'll give you the G value again, if you've forgotten already, but you do have it on your page. The most challenging thing is putting this into your calculator for many people. Because there's a lot of scientific notation, and I'm not joking. You think I'm joking. Typing this into your calculator is a real heck of a thing for some people. So really, try it out. I'm going to write it out, but you try it. Using your open and close brackets is going to be essential. I promise you. <clears throat> and yes, it's a long writing process because there's a lot of stuff to put down here, even though there's not that many variab variables. Don't forget to square the denominator. So if you want to pull out your calculator and follow along with me, I'm going to do it up on the screen, OK? <coughs> so follow along with me. You may have a similar calculator or even the same one. Let's try it. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 6 times 10. Oops, nuts. 6 times 10 to the power of 24 times 100 kilograms equals divided by, and now this is where it's really important to use your brackets because you're in the denominator now, divided by, otherwise it's going to just think you're dividing by 6.4 and then it'll take that answer and you do the scientific notation. So divided by 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6, close brackets, the power of 2, or squared, 977. Okay? It is hard for some people to get that into your calculator, but if you're meticulous and you recognize that your calculator needs you to tell it where all the brackets belong, especially in the denominator, you should get this. So 977 
0 0.05 newtons attracting the person to the planet. Or we could say approximately, because there's only two significant digits in that R value, approximately 980 newtons. <coughs> but what's also true is, as much as I'm attracted to the planet, if I'm a 100 kilogram person, maybe I've overshot my own weight a little bit there, my own mass a little bit, but if I was a 100 kilogram person and I feel approximately 977 uh, newtons of force on me, what does the the, what does the Earth feel in terms of attraction? Yeah, the Earth also is attracted to me with 977 newtons. And that makes me feel really special. The whole planet's attracted to me. Ooh la la. Okay? When I jump up, does the Earth come up and meet me? Or do I come down and meet the Earth? It's a matter of perspective. Maybe you meet partway in the middle, closer to the Earth than to me. But, yeah, a lot closer to the Earth. Okay, but, but that's a, a matter of perspective. Um, what about this? We said once before, and I want to do this as a little aside, just off to the side here. Didn't we say that force little g was equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity locally? And so we would have said, if we were talking about this last week, we would have said, ah, force due to gravity, everybody knows. That's 100 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. This is what we would have said last week if somebody asked us this. What's 100 times 9.81? 981 newtons. Are we close? Yes. Pretty close. Why is it different? What do you think the difference is? Is this a, an average value or a local value? That's a local value. This value here was determined by an average planetary radius, though. So on average, you're going to feel about 977 newtons anywhere on Earth, if you're 100 kilograms. If you happen to be in our neighborhood, you're going to feel 981. That's all. It'll be a little bit of difference, okay, on average. But that's reasonable, okay, within, within some significant digit error. And like I said before, it doesn't have to be the sweet thing about Newton's universal law of gravitation, it doesn't have to just be about sitting on the surface of Earth. It could be about attraction between people. Like I say, if we know how far away our belly buttons are and we know one another's mass, we could figure out mathematically our force of attraction towards one another. Okay? And it doesn't have to be stuck to people and it doesn't have to be stuck to the surface of the Earth. What about this? What if I don't stay on the surface of Earth anymore? What if I decide, I'll draw another earth, what if I want to figure out what the force of attraction is between the earth and, this is a satellite by the way, not a very good one admittedly, but the force of attraction between the earth and a satellite. Let's say that I find out that the satellite has an altitude, that is the distance between the satellite and the earth's surface, of 5,000 meters. Five thousand meters above the surface of the Earth, and let's say that our satellite has a mass of one thousand kilograms. Maybe, maybe that's too massive. Maybe it's not massive enough. Regardless, this is a hypothetical. But if we have a satellite that's a thousand kilograms and it's at an altitude of five thousand meters above the surface of the Earth, how could I figure out the force of attraction between the satellite and the Earth? Do I just put? Do I put 5,000 in as my R value? You have to add it to the radius of the Earth that we've already determined in this. You're right. Well, we didn't determine it. It was given to us, right? But yeah, we could use the radius of the Earth, which we were given earlier as 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters. We could use the altitude. And then when we go to do our universal law of gravitation calculation, we might say that instead of using 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters, we're going to say that the R is actually altitude plus radius of the Earth. And then whatever that value is, we'll go through the exact same process again. Okay? Sounds pretty reasonable. I'm, I'm not going to bother with it because it's not a whole lot of more complicated than what we just did. So whether we're finding attraction between bodies that are of comparable mass, or if we're finding attraction between things that are on the surface of the Earth to the Earth itself, or things that are, are massive but not on the Earth's surface, it's all the same ball of wax. And really, it's consistent with f little g that we've done before. 
but recognizing that we're talking about local values versus sort of average values. 